Hello everybody, welcome back to Commodore Corner here on YouTube on the Retro Bear channel. Thank you very much indeed for your company once again as we troll through some 8-bit classics, possibly uh, from my big Commodore 64 collection, which is the only way I can use to describe it. Uh, thank you very much indeed for tuning in for episode 4. If you've not seen episode 3, or indeed episodes 2 and 1, they are on the channel below. Um, go and have a look, and the episodes are on the playlist screen. Um, you'll find out what the format is. It's, it's not changed really, it's just, yeah, it, it's sort of me talking about games and stuff. Uh, let us address the game in the room at the time, which has been rather appropriate for episode 3 because we have some Marvel stuff. This is uh, Captain America and the Avengers, which is running off my Xbox emulator for the Mega Drive, a game I did have originally. Uh, when I had a Mega Drive, and I can't believe uh, how much this now goes for. It's an extremely ex incredibly expensive game to pick up. Why is it so expensive? It's not even a good conversion. I can finish, I used to be able to finish this in one sitting. I'm terrible at games, as you all see. I, I really cannot understand... Um, yeah, it got slated when it came out. It's a terrible review of a very good arcade game. But I, I like it, I think it's a good game. I, I think it's good. Just find it incredible. If I can finish it, then bloody hell, anybody else can. Anyway, we're not talking about Mega Drive games, we're talking about Commodore 64 games. Yes, that's what it is. Uh, so as I alluded to in the last episode of Commodore Corner, uh, that we would be talking doing a couple of sports games this episode. So I can immediately, immediately think that like 50% of the people who watched the last video, which is 40, um, are going to clear off and go and do something else less boring instead. In the meantime, for those of you who are hanging around for sports games, there is something else I've thrown in the middle. Uh, it's just slightly different. I'm working my way through a box. I've got about six boxes of the big box variant Commodore 64 games. Uh, all the jewel cases. And I've got like a stacking rack about that big. Just crammed full of tapes. Which is all the, the single, the small tape pieces. So that's how we're doing it at the moment. We're going through a very sort of slow process. And in this box there's, there's you know, a lot of games. A lot of games. We, we haven't even scratched the surface on what we've done so far. And there are some interesting games to come. And I did it box by box because I don't know what's in there. Until I sort of go, oh yeah, I can remember that. And oh yeah, I can remember that. But I know from having done my last video that I knew the next three games that couldn't were going to be these games. So it's a bit of a strange episode this week. Interestingly enough, if you've not seen Commodore Corner before, it's going to be me sort of introducing the games, some gameplay footage, me talking over it, and then coming back for summing up before I introduce the next video. So in the meantime, let us get on, on with today's game. First game we've got up. And I didn't know this was uh, by who it was, initially. Uh, so we got up International 3D Tennis. Now you'll notice there at the top, it's a sensible software game. Now I didn't know that until it loaded up. I got the loading screen up and thought, oh, I'm going to say it's sensible software. I didn't know they made this. It's also by Palace, which, uh, if memory serves me correctly, were the team of the uh, publishing house behind the Barbarian games. So that's rather interesting. But yeah, and this game, as you can see there, it's got a Zap Sizzler Award and a Commodore User Award, and I think that's a, a CMVG hit as well. So it's basically cleaned up quite a lot of the awards. Uh, you get one tape. Looks like it's only single-sided as well. You can usually tell if it's, if it's double-sided. Uh, sometimes they put the game on both sides, but generally they, if they did that, they would put writing on that side to say it is. I'd know that, so I was loading up a Salamander earlier for a future video. And that owned, that had the, the um, writing on both sides. And it won't load on the one side, but it does on the other. I don't know why. Uh, we also get a box with a rather interesting uh, note there, which basically tells you where you can return the game to. And this might be a series in itself of going around all these old addresses and finding out who is there now, is that, what does that place actually exist? Where, where are Palace Software now? What was there originally and what is there now? And then you get this, which I thought was, you know, the world's most boring poster. But it's actually the instructions. Yeah, games used to come with instructions, people, if you've not actually seen uh, an old game before and you're used to modern games coming in with, well, basically just a box. You don't even get the game in some of them, you just get a download code. This is the instructions. This is how to play the bloody game. And if, it's, you know, if you really want to test yourself, it's in foreign language on the back as well. What have we got here? Um, all the usual favourites. French, German. Yeah, French and German, I think, on the back there. 
So if you speak Spanish or Italian, you, you ain't got a chance of playing this one, or Welsh, probably. But yeah, but that, that, those are the instructions. And when you play the game, you realize what you're going to do is, is move the character around and hit the ball at the right time. It, it's, there's really nothing to it. Uh, the, the whole thing about this game when it came out was it was meant to be revolutionary in the fact that um, you won't want to see, you'll see better from the actual gameplay itself. But it was a 3D environment. That scoreboard there at the bottom is absolutely brilliantly rendered on the Commodore. I love how that looks on the Commodore 64. Bear in mind that this is sort of like 1989, 1990 technology. Maybe possibly even a little bit later. Um, but to get sort of like wireframe 3D graphics on a 8-bit system, very interesting. Anyway, I don't need to talk about this, do I? Um, watch the footage, see what you think. So you join us, um, therefore loading International 3D Tennis up. Not much happens for about four minutes on the load, but then we are presented with this screen. And if you can hear in the background, a rendition of the BBC's Wimbledon theme tune, which of course uh, is coming up very, very soon. And I dare say will be uh, earworming its way into many of you over the course of the summer weeks that are to come. And uh, yeah, it's, so it's, it does take quite a while to load this game, probably about eight to 10 minutes. As you can see here, uh, that's immediately when I recognise it was done by Sensible Software and of course produced by Palace Software as well. Nothing too exciting to get about here, very standard stuff, but I do like the theme tune, I've got to be honest with you, I think that is not um, a bad tune at all to have going in the background. So let's take ourselves on to some gameplay footage, as this is very, very important. Um, uh, initially when I sort of pressed uh, uh, play to continue once the screen had loaded, the actual game itself had crashed. So we're going to join this mid-game with me training 2-0 uh, in the first set to the computer. Now, uh, I'm the black player at the top of the picture. The computer is the player in white. You'll notice when your player flashes, as it just did there, uh, that's when you're meant to press the fire button to uh, produce a shot, moving the joystick in a certain direction, holding the fire button down for a powerful shot or as weaker shot if you so wish to do so by not pressing it so hard and as you can see top left hand corner those are the uh, current score so 15 all in this third game of the first and only set and you can have five sets you can go on a tour you can play as part of the championship you can play one-off games like this is like four oh, look at that return there brilliant 30 15 mr bear and there are also different sorts of uh, uh, surfaces plan as well. You've got playing on grass here, but obviously uh, clay, concrete, whatever, they're all part of the package here. So pretty much anything you could want for from a tennis game. Now I did say obviously that this was at the time a very revolutionary game. This uh, sort of 3D uh, graphical approach was something which hadn't been done before. And it was meant to be sort of something very well researched and it doesn't 30 years later, look like an awful lot, does it really? 1990, this came out. It doesn't really look like an awful lot to shout about, especially when people nowadays have been brought up in the likes of Virtua Tennis. But this I do like. I do love that scoreboard. I think that is absolutely brilliant. And you can just see in the top right-hand corner, that's a game time. He's showing five minutes. Obviously, the top left-hand corner is a time of day, 1.43 in the afternoon. But I do like that. I think that's really, really good. Uh, and at the time, you probably would have been blown away by just how good that was going forward um, and the, even the sort of court itself it doesn't look too bad it's a pretty good representation of what's going on uh, let's just move forward a little bit there because I forgot to press the fire button for some time so yeah it might not look like an awful lot nowadays but at the time it was certainly something different and it was very well reviewed it's got quite decent reviews uh, from all the, Co the Commodore magazines, I think it was Commodore User gave it a good one, Zap gave it a good one, uh, CVG gave it a good hit as well, it came out in all sorts of different formats, it wasn't just uh, the 8 bits, it was out in the 16 bit as well, Spectrum, Amstrad, Commodore 60, uh, Commodore Amiga, sorry, and Atari ST. Oh, brilliant baseline return, brilliant uh, sort of sideline return there. I don't watch tennis, I, you can tell by my uh, complete lack of interest in what I'm actually doing at the time, but... Uh, it is one of the easier games I've actually played tennis-wise that's been to pick up and play. Probably the easiest one of all was uh, Virtua Tennis, but this, I, I must be honest with you, I thought 
ah, this is going to be a terrible game to, to get started with. But no, it wasn't. It actually it it felt pretty good. It's it's obviously slow, as we said. But you can't excuse that. That's the old technology. But to be fair, I really, really, really did think that this was something that um, I could get into, and I won a game. There we go, three one now. Brilliant, isn't it? That's it. I can judge that because I say I get my backside usually kicked on these sort of games, but actually winning a game is very good. One thing I don't particularly like about it um, is the movement of the players. Uh, you do have to move around a little bit, which I know some games a bit more nowadays are a bit more forgiving from that point of view. Uh, and it is, it is a touch sort of limited really, it's, it's just a hold the fire button down and pick a direction. And there's, there's no sort of, I think when you get to a bit higher levels in the game, you can do things like sort of spin and um, all that. And sometimes it's not quite easy to see where the ball gone. I thought that had gone out, it hadn't, it sort of hit the line at the back and that's it. So yeah, slow, a bit sticky, but honestly, I don't think this is a, this is a bad tennis game at all. And like I said, I judge games by how quickly I can pick them up and, and play them quickly and, and get used to the controls. And with this one, okay, there's a few moments where I'm flailing around like a stick man with a triangle in my hand. But, generally speaking, not bad at all. Not bad at all. Far, far better than I honestly thought uh, this would have played out to start with. Yeah, so not bad, that one. I, 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 th I really did think fear the worst i mean yeah it's slow there's no getting around the fact that it's slow and you've just got to get used to the timing but i've played other tennis games which have been equal have been unforgiving i played super tennis on the super nintendo for the first time in years the other day and i was getting my backside tanned i really was uh but this one i don't know it was, it was okay it was it was on the, on just whatever there's no adjustment to the level setting or anything like that it was as it was, it was. Just change the number of sets, seemed fine. Um, and, and the fact I was able to sort of reasonably keep pace, and in fact, had I been a, probably a bit more, what's the word? I got my timing and I got my eye in after a while, I probably, you know, that would have been 4-1, that would have been 3-2, it could have been 3-2, it was 4-1, that's how close it was. But that's an awful lot better than I usually do. So I wasn't bad, so yeah. Do you know what? I don't think that's too bad. Yeah, by today's standards, it's, you know, compared to sort of like virtual tennis and Whatever, even compared to Super Tennis on the Super Nintendo, it's a completely different game altogether. But you know what? That's not bad. That is not bad. It's not brilliant, but it's not bad. Definitely worth a look if you get a chance to. And I think because it got a budget re-release, you can find it anywhere. In fact, I'm pretty sure I go short my spare copy. I sent him as my spare copy a few weeks back, so I'm pretty sure uh, it's readily available. Anyway, let's move on to the next game. I'm going to spare the other sports game until the very end because I'm going to bookend it this one. I forgot this game was actually in there. And, oh man, did I have some trouble with this one. Um, this is Tarzan from Martech Software. Um, and I've never heard of them. There was, a, uh, of course, Tarzan films back in the 1930s with Johnny Wise, Muller and Buster Crab as Tarzan. Then there was a 60s TV series with Roy somebody or other, which I vaguely remember. Uh, and then there was a film in the early 1980s, Greystoke, I think it was, The Legend of Tarzan. Then, of course, it was a Disney film. And I'm sure, I wonder no one's actually tried to remake Tarzan since then, I, I'm not quite sure. Um, but, very, very strange. But yeah, so, a Tarzan game, this, this, I think, when did this come out? 1986, so this was sort of three years after Greystoke. And uh, I think a friend of mine had this. I remember seeing it. I don't remember ever actually playing it. And what's really interesting, it's got one of these strange boxes. Because this box doesn't open all the way up. There's no actual hinge on this box, if you look there. No actual hinge on that. So it's like, lit, just open it up, and that is it. And there's the tape. I always like to show the tape off. There we go. Tiles that. Um and there is there are graphics but you can't see them because they're behind the instruction there's also a return slip in there as well so all this stuff is in there again i picked this game up probably about 10 years ago easily uh and we had a real problem we had a real game getting this one to load uh i've got so i've got about six data cassettes and the one i've been using is possibly the most reliable one i've got 
and three times it failed to load tiles and I thought, uh, kept coming up with a syntax error, but you never thought you'd hear a syn the word syntax error used in the 2020s, it's a very common word in the 1980s. So I swapped it over for one that Mrs. Bear bought a few weeks back, boxed, uh, which uh, when this my particular data cassette failed, this one sort of stepped in and managed to chase HQ, the very first game I did, it managed to load it. And lo and behold, it loaded this one, because I had very, 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 very little expectation for this one. And then all of a sudden it just worked out the blue. So we got some footage, so um, let's have a look at Tarzan, shall we? Oh, was that Jimmy Savile? That's Tarzan, Tarzan. So we move on to Tarzan. Now, as explained, this was a, a real pain in the backside to get loaded, but eventually it did, and we were confronted by a loading screen. Now, this is always good. I'm going to try and show these when they do happen. Uh, I've begun to wonder, wonder whether there was one on the tennis game or not. International 3D tennis, but there was. And there's one on here. And to be honest with you, if you go back to the cover I showed you a short while ago, that's a pretty good rendition of it. It's not a full rendition because there's a, obviously a gorilla holding a baby below that, but I actually don't think that's a bad impression of that front cover at all. I mean, Tarzan looks vaguely like a human being, which is most unusual, especially if you go back and look at the Chase HQ one. Uh, and those animals are very well represented. I think that's a really, 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 really good go at it. And the music as well doesn't sound too bad, does it? You'll be grateful for that when we get to the game because the music in the game is terrible but this this is not bad this is not bad I, I, I'm I'm very in favor of this one fortunately it's all downhill from here and let's go to the main game and yeah it's it's all a bit green isn't it it's, the first thing that reminded me of was platoon predator two games I don't like on the Commodore 64 um, what you've got here, you've got a jump function, you've got uh, a sort of gamboling function by the looks of it. Uh, some sort of, I don't even know what that is, some sort of banana, which sort of hit the bottom left hand corner then. And then you've got some very basic combat moves, kicking and punching, and that's it. Now I can't actually go any further at the end of that screen. And then for some reason, I have no idea, it looks like probably a tiger or a cheetah or something who's just trying to run past me. So I've got absolutely no idea where I'm going, there's no map, there's nothing to sort of point me in the right direction. You can see there's a pit there, which you have to sort of jump over. Walking into that pit means you sort of sink in quicksand like that. And as you'll see, just to the left of the pit there, there's sort of some sort of like, um, appears to be some sort of thing. Just before that pit there, something in the background. Now the idea is, is you, you sort of turn to face it, you actually walk through that as it's like a secret way, so it's a way, so there we go, to find a different plot station. And I found a person who then starts hitting me. And the green uh, bar there is my energy bar, but at the moment I'm getting my ass kicked. I can't work out what the best way to do the combat is. But it's one of these things where, where the, the automatically the enemies home in on you. They get that close to you that you've got very little opportunity to sort of beat them to the punch, as it were, quite literally. And I've always hated games like that. I really have done where people get so close to you that you, you just can't, you just cannot do anything with. Again, knowing I did which way to go, what I'm meant to be doing, this is so, so difficult. We'll, we'll go up there, shall we, and just see what's in here. But this is the problem. This is the same problem I had with Platoon, where there's lots of sort of walking around and doing this, and I didn't like that game at all. Uh, Predator was slightly different, uh, but that was, again, working from left to, left to right. Uh, and again, here I've reached the end of it. Uh, so what do we think of this so far? Well, the music is really annoying. I really hate the music in this game. It's absolutely terrible. The combat system is terrible. Graphically, I mean, we're talking 1986 Commodore 64 here. I don't know if that's... If that, is that good by Commodore 64 7 of 1984? I don't know. Bear in mind that we've just seen a game, which is four years later, incorporating massive amounts of sort of wireframe graphics. Uh, and... I, I just I just don't know. I don't know if this meant. To, does this look good? Is this not? I don't, I, it doesn't sort of inspire me. I mean, I like the movement on the, on the hair when, when Tarzan's running around. It appears to be his hair's flopping in the wind. Or well, it could be a gra graphical glitch. I don't know. But it just seems to be a bit aimless, running, running around, not really finding out what's going on, and with very little guidance as to, as to what's meant to be get, what you're meant to be achieving. I, 
just just don't get it. And where's he coming from again? Where's that tiger going? Help! Uh, this this isn't really very good. And um, yeah, Tarzan the Ape Man possibly has been game played by apes because there doesn't appear to be an awful lot here, people. Yeah, it's not very good, is it? No. As I said in the video, I basically said the video, I can't remember now because I'm, I'm, I can't remember what I said. Didn't half remind me of Platoon. And I know Platoon came out, I think, after that game. But I didn't like Platoon. And I, I really had absolutely no idea what the hell I was meant to be doing. Jumping over the cheetah, or the leopard, having a fist fight with a native, which I really didn't quite sure, and, and basically sort of avoiding the quicksand. You can avoid the quicksand as much as you like. I just don't know. I, yeah, it's. Um, I, I I can't recommend that at all. That music in the game was so annoying. I mean, even just playing it for that, that short period of time, wanted to turn it off. I didn't mind the loading screen. I thought the loading screen was very good. The music that went with it was very very good. But the game itself, no. And I seem to remember that game didn't get a very good review at the time of it. I probably should have found out what the reviews were and told you what they were. But I'm pretty sure if you go and have a look on the website. Uh, Lemon 64 is probably your best bet for all these Commodore 64 games. It will tell you just how bad that is. A terrible game. Was it worth the hassle? Was it worth really the hassle of using, of trying to load it five times? Well, I want to make sure all my games work and I want to be able to sort of say that, yes, this collection works. One game I say I have been having trouble with is Salamander. But I mean, did actually manage to get that to work, so I'll have to do it. But I was only doing that for a test. That's going to come at some point in the future. In the meantime, let's go on to the final game of this week's Commodore Corner. I don't usually... Well, I, 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 I say the worst till last. Now, I, honestly, that game I just played Tarzan is worse than this game. It's not a lot in it, but it is worse than that. And it is Gaza's Super Soccer. Now, it does say free colour sticker there. Unfortunately, that has long gone. Which would have been a bonus, I dare say. For those of you who aren't watching in the UK, and there aren't many of you, I know there aren't that, but particularly for, for American viewers, who is Gaza? What is, what is Gaza Super Soccer? Uh, Paul Gascoigne is the gentleman in question, uh, was a very famous footballer back in the 1980s over here in England. He played for Newcastle, uh, then he went to play for Tottenham, a big club in London, uh, got picked for England to go to the World Cup in 1990, uh, then he uh, got a big move to uh, Lazio in Italy. And then, before he went to the Lazio, he injured his knee badly. He's never quite the same player again. Came back and spent some time uh, with uh, Rangers in Scotland. Finished his career at Middlesbrough and Everton. Middlesbrough and Everton, I think he finished his career with. Uh, also played for England. Famous probably for two instances on the football field and a number of them off. Uh, the two instances on the football field, World Cup 1990, semi-final against West Germany. Uh, famously got a yellow card. Uh, which, because he'd already got one in the competition before, would mean that if England made the World Cup final, he wouldn't play in it. And he was uh, crying his eyes out at the end of the game because England didn't get to the World Cup final anyway. <laughs> which he made the point. Um, and also Euro 96, uh, where he scored a fabulous goal against Scotland at Wembley, which sort of catapulted England to the World uh, European Championship semi-finals, where once again they lost to uh, Germany, who now sort of unified Germany and had he had he actually is in that game in, in extra time had he actually had longer studs on the end of his boot he might have poked England into the final but we don't know and and many many famous instances of stuff happened off the field as well um, but I'm not going to go into because that, that's to do the man a great disservice but that's who Gazza is anyway uh, for anybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about. Uh, so yes yeah, unfortunately colour sticker had gone mercifully it's quite a short load this one mm -hmm. Probably can't see from the size of the tape there. Like trying try and give you an idea of, of how sort of big these games are. Um, 3D tennis was a massive load. That doesn't sound rude. It does sound rude, doesn't it? Yeah. Don't say that again on camera, Ross, because people will wonder what the hell you're talking about. But yeah, I, I mean, um, that was a massive, massive, massive long load. Great load of tape. That one there has barely got anything to load to, which is good. We like games like this. Like I said to other people, you know, sometimes a game can take three, three and a half minutes load. Sometimes they can take ten. Or sometimes they keep loading stuff in and you have to rewind the tape. We've done those before. Uh, and there's the instructions. Which is seriously uninteresting. I did read something in here which, which sort of made me 
made me smile, and this just probably gives you an idea of what it is. It's controlling the goalkeeper. Um, control will then go to your, your player, which is nearest the ball, which you would expect it to do so. However, the exception is your goalkeeper. To get control of him at any time, you must press the space bar on the Atari and the uh, Amiga games and press enter on the uh, Commodore 64, the Spectrum and the Amstrad. So you actually have to press the keys to take control the goalkeeper and then he can then can be moved about in the normal way. He can be made to die by pressing the fire button and moving in the required direction. But to restore control to other players, you must then press spacebar or enter again to return him to a computerized state. Why so bloody complicated? Why is it going to be complicated? My goodness, why is it so complicated? And this game also was, was sort of, as you will see very, very shortly, um, was made with this revolutionary new playing system where usually at that point in time, Football games were side on scrollers. Occasionally, you'd have a top down, vertical, you know, top to bottom um, movement. But all the time, it was side on. This one had a side on one, and then when you got into the final third at either end, the camera rang, the, the game would then flip to a different screen, and you'd sort of be, be facing the goal in a football of the year type thing. I'll tell you what, have a look at the footage, and you'll see how that well that works, because believe me, it doesn't. And so we come to Gazza's Super Soccer, which we are given a representation of the man himself from his Tottenham Hotspur days. This is probably uh, pre-World Cup 90, you can tell by the haircut. Well, this is all we're given, we're given nothing else, just a loading screen, no music, uh, nothing of interest to see here, absolutely very, very little. And this seems to be the uh, sort of the feel of the game, it's sort of, there's not an awful lot here not a great deal to look at and yeah it's all a bit strange really uh, let's move on to the actual game itself so we're presented with four options create league create cup play friendly or demo so we'll have a quick friendly game i think that's probably the best way to do it uh options play versus computer or play against each other now it automatically picks a team for you um so you can play as nottingham forest against spurs uh, but when you're going to change the, the team from Nottingham Forest, you can't. It actually sort of gives you the exact same thing. A couple of things to notice there at the very, very top of the screen. Uh, it does say you have a sort of skill factors, maximum speed, and so you can adjust them very much like Emin Hughes' football, for those of you who played that game. And there's also a playing style, 4 4 2. I'm not sure whether you could actually edit the players' names here. You may have been able to, possibly, I don't know. The style button is the playing style, so that alters that around. But as long as you leave everybody at 50. Um, you can sort of distribute how you want, so I don't know, um, that, that didn't really sort of work for me. And so here we are, and yeah, it's really unimpressive, isn't it? Um, yeah, what can you say? Uh, <laughs> it's not really much you can add to it. Um, I'm the player with the ball, it took me a long time to work out who I was, I am the player with the ball in brown, flashing brown. Uh, the computer player, for some reason, is flashing blue. I don't know why we need to know whether the computer player is flashing or not. We just need to find out where we are. Uh, tackling is fairly straightforward. Some got, boys go up to them, keep pressing fire, and hopefully you get the ball back. Um, the triangle in the middle, you've got the score, not Nottingham F0, Spurs 0. There's a triangle there, and that is meant to be the power meter, uh, determining on how hard you kick or throw the ball. So the higher up it goes, the more further it is going to be. Yeah, it, again, it's not the greatest method. Um, I, I must be honest with you, it's sadly lacking in that sort of... I mean, I, mean, I know Match Day had a lot like the flashing bar over the player's head. Um, Emily Hughes didn't you just press the fire button as long as you wanted to. I'm not sure. Now, uh, let's see where we're going. So, but you can see it's one of these where the ball sort of sticks to the feet. There are variations in passing and kicking. Uh, for some reason, the Spurs have just thrown the ball out for a corner, which is very, very helpful for me. Uh, but yeah, holding the fire button gives you determination of the shot, and then obviously by either moving the uh, joystick up or keeping it flat, depends on the elevation. Meanwhile, I'm going to have a shot on goal here, and it's in. It's a goal. A goal for Nottingham Forest against Spurs. Well, there we go. So Mr Bear is 1-0 up. 
Now, nothing else happened for the rest. I'm going to sort of fast forward here. Nothing else happens for the rest of the first half. So we get a half time 1 0. Let's join it in the second half. We won 12 to go on the clock. And Spurs are on the attack here. And we'll play the rest of the game out. That was a hefty old kick. You can see that the way the picture keeps changing from the side on angle to the goal. It, it doesn't help the game play in the slightest. It really doesn't. And you can see why since then that games just haven't done this. It, 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 that was the whole selling point of this game. Whoops, that's going to be an own goal, isn't it? It is an own goal. It's an own goal by Tottenham from about the halfway line. Nothing changes. It's very true to life, this, isn't it? Very true to life. Um... It, it just doesn't, it doesn't work, it's, it's so disorientating, you forget which way you're going and, and the amount of times I'm holding the joystick going from left to right and then as soon as the picture changes you're then going to change your joystick direction to up to down, hang on one second, it's a goal, Spurs have got one back, that was a good one wasn't it, so 2-1 with 44 seconds to go, can we hold on, yeah I, I will be honest I have played worse football games than this one there have been many over the year. I've played an awful lot of rubbish. Um, but again, this is just the example here. I, tackling the ball. So get the tackle in, and then I'm just going to sort of walk it into the net. There we go. I've just walked. No, you know, no, no pressure shot. Walk that into the back of the net. It is like real life against Spurs, but you know, there's no realism there. So, you know, winning 3-1, is that an achievement? Possibly, yeah. Not bad for a first go, but would I play this again? No. I don't like the system, I don't like the method. There are worse games, believe me, there are worse games, but this is a pretty it's pretty bottom of the barrel stuff, this one. You play it once, you wouldn't go back and play it again, that's for sure. Good save by the goalkeeper there. And there we go, full time. And it's a victory for Retro Bear and Nottingham Forest over Spurs. Well, that wasn't a fluke, was it? I mean, I don't usually win games like that. You know, usually the, these gameplay videos are me sort of flailing around with a joystick for 10 minutes or so and, and, and uploading some footage and talking about how I've got on with the game. But that wasn't a fluke, but I've got to be honest with you, it ain't a great game, is it? That, that is a really terrible football game. Football game. That, game, that one I walked into the net, practically. Just walked it in. It shouldn't happen. It shouldn't happen. And it's also one of those games where, where passing doesn't really matter because in those days, games were made with the ball which would st stick to the player's foot. So there wouldn't be anything like you see in kickoff or nowadays in Pro Evolution and FIFA games where the ball sort of moves as it should do. In those games, if the character got the ball, it was stuck on the end of the toe. That was it. Very, very few games try to do anything. In Micro Pro Soccer, which I think is regarded as one of the best games on the Commodore 64, that suffers from that sort of thing. and it's, it's not great. Uh, and that whole game just stunk um, it really did the graphics are poor the, the three way angle just does not work at all it just confuses the whole the whole thing the controls are, aren't great I mean I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it was slow I would say it sort of moves at a fair pace but um, it is not good at all that is the first time I've ever played that game I'd, I'd seen it on the Amiga I'd seen the reviews for it and I avoided it like the play I've not played any of these three games before today ever uh, I've always wanted to play Gaza Super, so I'm going to see how bad it was, and I'm glad I played it now, because it is bad. So there we go. Um, you know, no one's pretending that these games are, uh, you know, are going to be full, full throttle recommendations every time we bring them out. Those are your three games this week. International 3D Tennis, which I would thoroughly recommend. Uh, Tarzan, which I wouldn't recommend to anybody. And Gaza Super Soccer is something, a game I wouldn't recommend to those people I wouldn't recommend it to in the first place. Don't. I wouldn't even recommend it to Gaza. I wonder, if he's, I wonder if he's, he's played it. I mean, he seems a reasonably intelligent person. I'm sure he realises it's a terrible game. Um, anyway, that, that's it for Commodore Corner this week. Thank you very much indeed for tuning in. I'm not even sure what's next because I don't know. I've sort of reached... I've got sort of two piles in the box. So I've reached the end of that pile now so I can have a, a direction I can go in. I can move in one direction. Not that one direction. I can move... I can go one way or I could go another be interesting to see so that will give you a little bit of intrigue for the next episode anyway in the meantime thank you very much indeed for tuning in i hope you enjoyed that uh, i'm off for a stroll uh, down commodore corner uh, i may pop into spectrum street but uh, that depends if i feel like a licorice all sort of be black and white i don't know 
in the meantime, thank you very much indeed for watching. I will see you again very, very soon. If you have enjoyed that, there's that there for you. And, um, yeah, hopefully the pleasure of company will be here again very, very soon. Take care. Bye for now.